Today we are starting a very important subject of computer science data structures which is backbone of programming. Anybody who wants to learn programming, he should have a fair degree of idea of data structures. Actually what happens whenever a programmer decides, whenever a programmer starts writing program before that he has to decide a suitable data structure for his data based on the applications, okay. So, he will be deciding a data structure based on the type of applications he wants to develop, okay. So, all these things we will see afterwards. Right now I am just giving you a very simple definition of data structures. So, data structure is a way of organizing data in memory so that it can be used efficiently. It consists of two parts. Number one, how data is organized in memory, okay. So, let us take some examples. Suppose I have an array. So, see array uses a contiguous block of memory. So, if this is an array, so and if the, these are the elements of array, okay. So, what happens? Suppose first element is 10. So, second element will be placed just after the first element if it is 20. Now, third element will be placed just after the second element and so on. Okay. So, this is a contiguous block of memory. So, what is the advantage of an array? In case of an array, direct access is available. Suppose you want to go to a particular element, then you know the starting address and you know the offset. So, you can calculate the address of that element and you may directly go there, okay. So, it provides you direct access, okay. Now, let us see one more data structure which is a linked list, okay. What will happen in linked list? See, I will be having nodes. Okay, so, I, now I do not require a contiguous block of memory. I will be having nodes like this. This is my first node. See, every node will be having at least two fields, one data field and one address field. Okay, so, I will be placing my data here. Now, this node will have a link or address, will have a link to a similar type of next node. Okay. In fact, here I will be storing address of similar type of next node. So, what is happening? Second field is uh, connecting you to similar type of next node and in next node what will happen? Again, I will have data and then there will be an address field which will give me address of similar type of next node. So, if this is the next node, now what happens here? Again, I will have some data and this will give me address of similar type of next node. If there is no next node, so this will be pointing to null. So, this is just a linked list, okay, where we can use fragmented memory also. You do not require a contiguous block of memory because in every node what you are doing, you are store, you are having at least one data item and then you are having a field from where you will get address of similar type of next node, okay. Now, I will be drawing a tree. So, now I am drawing a binary search tree, okay, which is a non-linear data structure. See, 10 is stored at the root, okay. Then, left of 10 is 5, okay. A right of 10 is 20, left of 20 is 15, right of 20 is 25, okay. So, this is just a nonlinear data structure called a binary search tree, okay. So, where I am just following hierarchy, okay, this is parent, these are children, okay, these are, uh, if this is the parent, then this is the child, this is the parent, then this is the child, okay. So, we are following a hierarchy in this and normally a binary search tree is used for indexing, for fast indexing binary search trees are used. So, this is just an overview how data can be placed, okay, in case of an array, in case of a linked list and in case of a binary search tree, okay. So, the first part of our data structure is how data is organized in memory. I have given you three examples how data may be organized in memory. Now, what is the second part? Second part says what all operations can be performed on that data structure, 
okay so there will be a description what all operations can be done on the, that data structure so there are two things first how data is organized in that data structure and second what all operations can be done on that data structure okay so now we will see the classification of data structure so first one is primitive data structure in which all the data types of uh, languages are covered so integer float character boolean okay all these are primitive data structure then a non primitive data structure in non primitive data structure first one is simple data structure so your array is a simple data structure so i have not written a string because normally a string is also implemented using array only and even the record is also a simple data structure now we come to compound data structure in compound data structure first one is linear data structure and in linear data structure we will be covering all the linked lists okay it means a single linked list double linked list doubly linked list and a circular linked list all will be covered in linear data structure okay see i have not written stack and queue in linear data structure because stack and queue are adts and now will be after this will be covering adts separately now non linear data structure in non linear data structure we have all trees and graphs okay so this is the classification of data structures now let us see adt what is adt adt abstract data type adt is a conceptual or mathematical model which specifies different type of operations on that data type okay so in adt what we do we only specify what all operations can be done on that data type okay normally we don't cover how those operations will be done okay because how those operations will be done those operations will be done by using a suitable data structure okay it means for implementing adt we require a suitable data structure so what we have written in adt is a conceptual or mathematical model which specifies different type of operations on that data type however it does not specify how these operations will be implemented it is called abstract because it only tells the operations which adt can perform without telling how these will be implemented this process of providing only the essentials while hiding the details is known as abstraction okay examples of adt are stack queue and list okay so now let us take example of stack okay stack adt so what happens in stack adt you can have these many operations push pop display and peek push means you are uh, say you are adding one more element at the top of the stack pop means you are popping an element or you are taking out an element from the top of the stack display means you are printing or displaying all the elements from top to bottom and peak means you are displaying the element which is at the top okay so these are the operations being specified in stack adt now how these operations will be performed for that we will be taking some data structure for performing these operations so to implement this adt will be using a suitable data structure a suitable data structure for implementing stack maybe a linked list or maybe an array okay so these operations are specified in stack adt which now stack adt works on lipo basis last in first out basis to implement stack the programmer will be using a suitable data structure such as an array or linked list okay so now we have taken an example similarly we may give examples of a queue or a list also okay queue and list are also implemented using some data structure only okay fine 